Patrick Obahiagbon is a fantastic role model, always shunning the limelight with his effortless and modern style. Patrick has devoted his political life not to making cheap headlines and acting like a clown like so many do, but to communicating with his electorate, the people who put him in power, in simple, straightforward English. Here are his finest moments from a recent interview he did with Nigeria's Channels TV. What's your thought about what's been happening in River State? Let me say, press the symbol. The political krinkunkra, or if you like, the political higihaga, has all the trappings of an odoriferous odor saga. Uh, and I am mechanically bewildered that this flashpoint is of no serious concern. So are you saying this, all of this is happening because of... No, 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 no. Let me say, let me say, what we have at best is a form of government I call Kakisto mobile plutocracy. But if you look at the totality, what we have is Krinkum Krakum. <laughs> Patrick's English is everywhere in Niger, even in the freaking church. Amen, everybody. Condominous salutations, my equanimous parishioners. According to the Gospel of Richard, paragraph 419 of the Old Testament, the crinkum crankum of my perspicacious osculations are calling you to give your money, give your naira to the pastor. So if you don't want to go to the devil, come to Pastor Azubi Amen. That's it, everyone. My name is Ikenna as we can. Thank you for welcome back. Um, that chap is actually with us in the studio right here. <laughs> Ikenna <laughs> as we can. is right here in the studio. <laughs> Good morning, Ikenna. Good morning. Uh, he is described as the quintessential African Renaissance man. After abandoning a high flying job as a lawyer, he followed his passion for comedy and created the highly acclaimed, hilarious video blog, What's <laughs> Up Africa? Well, he's home now to ask us, What's Up Nigeria? Exactly. Yeah, that's why I'm here. Thank you for having me on the show. <laughs> Thank it's great to have you here. Yeah. Thank, <laughs> Thank you for coming. Now, what led you to leave law? You spent all that effort studying law. And you decided to go be a comedian. I know, yeah. It's not a decision my dad was very uh, happy with, shall we say. But um, After paying all those fees, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. the fees mm. and, um, you know, he wanted the best for me. And law is a very secure career. Um, it's challenging work, a great pension. But the reality is I was extremely unhappy. And uh, basically, I wasn't able to be myself. So the courtroom was not making you happy? No, no, I wasn't a barrister. I didn't go to court, but I was in an office. Uh, I was in a... Pouring over documents correct. and I was deciding whether lawyer. this contract was right or not. Correct. <laughs> speaking to lawyers, really speaking to lawyers. It. Well, it, I mean, it's, lots of people love it, but for me, it didn't really... I wasn't passionate about it, and it, I didn't feel... I wasn't myself. Every day I would walk into the office, and I was literally a different person. And uh, I wanted to give myself a chance at doing something that was rewarding, and uh, yeah, that I could yeah make a difference with and uh, enjoy. What's the difference you're making? I think I'm um, uh, I'm doing a couple of things. I hope, which is uh, challenging the traditional narrative about a continent of a billion people. Um, in uh, in a lot of Western media, there are you know we've heard Chimamanda put it so eloquently: this danger of a single story. Um, a very uh, one-sided, very, it's either famine, war, um, pestilence, or, or everything is perfect and Africa is rising and uh, everything is just wonderful. Um, but for many people, you know, Africa is rising, but Africans are not, not all Africans. So I try and find a middle ground in there to be critical um, and talk about serious issues, but um, hopefully in an entertaining way. What led you to start up What's Up Africa? And since you've chosen Africa, it means that you, you travel a lot. 
because you have to see these things that you are making fun of, mm -hmm. that you're parodying. Mm -hmm. um, why not What's Up Nigeria? Which is where you're used to. Yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, that, that's an option. Uh, maybe for the future. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Anybody out there? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I enjoy the fact... Um, I, I would describe myself as a pan-Africanist in terms of my ideals and I would love to see a lot more cooperation um, and I enjoy the variation. Yes, it is true that there, uh, there's more focus on Nigeria. I can't get away from that, you know, that's, those are my roots. So where in Africa have you been? With what parts of Africa have you traveled around to see stuff? Sure, um, so last year I was in uh, Angola. Uh, Burundi, um, Kenya, um, and Nigeria. And this year, what did you see in Kenya? What, what were the things that caught your attention? Um, the things that caught my attention. So I made uh, items about uh, the local football league there um, and uh, the progress that they're making in terms of professionalizing it. Um, I made uh, items about uh, pop culture. Um, some very cool uh, new bands um, that are coming up and that are making a lot of waves internationally um, and that are very surprising you know, for, for people outside of the country. So how did you parody or how did you present what your experience was in, um, in Kenya, for example? Um, well, for instance, oh, let, let's focus more on the, the slightly political aspect. So Westgate, um, tragedy. Okay. Oh, yes. Um, and uh, I made an item just after it. Um, because I saw some comments that were being made by um, William Ruto, um, uh, effectively politicizing the tragedy and um, trying to uh, use it as I saw it um, to postpone his ICC trial. Um, and you know, I didn't think, I thought that was yeah, gross, to be honest. So I decided to talk about that and I made a, a parody of, of that. Uh, of that moment to yeah, air my own views. Similarly, there was this um, uh, new... Uh, and what was the view and how did you air it? That's where I'm going because I've left it. Do you have a view? No, we, that's not a clip that we have with us, unfortunately. Uh, okay, okay. okay, let's see one of the clips. clips. Um, I th I, I'm not even sure which one's coming up now. Uh, let's see one of the <laughs> clips that you've got. Uh, I'm sure there will be a couple that we've got in the studio here. I'd love okay, to sure. see them. Let, let Nigerians just have a little laugh about some of this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. In South Sudan. I don't care if you're an award-winning Ugandan political commentator. Yes, African journalists reporting on the South Sudanese conflict can say adios to their professions. Because the only news people really need to know is obviously from Daniel Howden, the first Western journalist into South Sudan. You see, being a Western journalist, better still a Guardian journalist, is a distinction to be emphasized. Take the contextual accuracy of a headline like South Sudan, the state that fell apart in a week. And how about some award-worthy headline writing from another glorious British Fleet Street institution? South Sudan gangs deal out death by language test. Truly dizzying heights of Western journalism. <laughs> My name's Iken Nesweke. Happy New Year, guys, and thanks for watching the show. All right, everyone, I have a very exciting announcement to make. As of What's up, Africa? Every cause needs a hero. And for Nigeria's community of over 50 males who think it's okay to marry a 13-year-old girl, that man is... Jerry Man! <laughs> Than a speeding jam for, he can consume a place of Amala in less than 15 seconds. And he fights against justice and reason, no matter how logical or sensible a decision may seem. It's Senator Ahmed Sani Yerima, aka Yerima. That's right, kid. <laughs>
Okay. Uh, you are something else. Um, what drives you when you see some of, of those things? And then how do you process the information exactly. to arrive at that? We mm. said it at the same time. Mm. Well, uh, what drives me to, to make the show, I guess, is a lot of the time it's frustration at uh, some of the things that I, that I see and I think are just unfair and uh, unjust um, and uh, generally unpopular because you know, this, this subject is obviously very sensitive, but I think a lot of Nigerians don't agree with the, the bill. Nevertheless, it's, it's there. Um, how I arrive at the script and everything, yeah, that's a, it's a challenge. Um, so we have two episodes every week, and uh, for two years it was basically me on a Tuesday and a, uh, and a Wednesday sitting behind my computer researching stories, um, uh, making sure they're factually accurate, uh, and then just trying to make them funny, you know? Um, as of this year, I'm very happy um, to say that I'm working also with a Ugandan writer, Ernest Bazanye, who is uh, also a satirist, a humorist, funny guy, and now I finally have someone to spar with, mm -hmm. you know, and hopefully in the future, you know, the show can grow, more writers, and we can make the comedy and uh, the issues that we talk about more provocative and, uh, and even funnier. What's the hottest story that you've told, and how? Um, well, the one that probably got the highest the most views. Yes. Uh, I did something on the um, Zimbabwean elections. Um, and I did a kind you of... You didn't talk about Mugabe. Well, yeah, maybe, you, maybe yeah. a little bit. How can you talk about Mugabe? You didn't talk about Mugabe. Let me, let me just find out. Okay, what did you say maybe about a little yeah. bit, Maybe a little bit. In that one, I, um, we did a breakdown of, um, uh, of the, the political landscape, if you like. Because for a lot of people, everyone just knows the name Mugabe. But really, the issue is uh, there's a lot of horse trading behind the scenes at ZANU-PF. Who's yeah. going to take over from Mugabe when he's gone? Yeah. So um, uh, I tried to do that and talked about um, Nangangwa, who's uh, this like, slightly shady character. And I portrayed him as um, the bad guy from, uh, Star, from Star Wars, you know, this uh, Darth Maul character or whatever. <laughs> um, and uh, there's a lady... I'm sorry? What about Morgan? Morgan. Um, Morgan... He wasn't uh, there at all. He wasn't Zanu there at all. This Zanu was real, like, uh, uh, Zanu PF stuff. So there's also a lady, I can't remember her name, but she's very... Uh, she's like a motherly figure, so I portrayed her as the mother in the Cosby show, um, which is this US TV series. Right. Very motherly, you know. And uh, yeah, it was fun. And, and Sesame Street, or Sesame Square, as it is over here, also made an appearance with Count Duck Count talking about vote counting and vote rigging. Oh, sorry, I mean vote counting. <laughs> so it was, um, I try and, yeah, like I said, make it more fun, also informative. It's okay, yeah. let, let, let's, let's not talk about your work, and let's talk about you okay. for a change. Uh -oh. um, you were born here in Sule. In Nigeria. Yeah. Yes, I saw you taking us to um, some area in Sule. Correct. It's near Ajao Road. Correct. Yes. And you went to school, primary school in Nigeria. Correct. At what point did you leave our shores? Eight years old. I left to go to the UK mm -hmm. with my mum and dad. And then uh, we would come back fairly regularly, or I would come back, um, until age 18. Uh, and mm -hmm. then there was a break of 15 years. Uh, and then uh, I came back. And for a long time, you know, before this trip back last year, I thought I didn't really need to come back. I've always had Nigerian friends, Nigerian family uh, around me. Um, but after the trip coming back, I realized, wow, you know, there is no substitute to, to breathe the air, to meet people who call you brothers and brother, you know, that's, uh, it's very special. And even on this trip back, um, yeah, I wanted to stand in the queue that was very long on the Nigerian side instead of the British side. Even, uh, I can't explain but it. You carry it's really good passport. to be home. Not anymore, but I'm, a, I'm getting it this summer. Okay. So I've been relying on my British passport for a while. Okay. You've so been away for so long, and you went away when you were so young. So you yeah. don't really have any friends here, do you? Um, not, no, not now I do because of the show. Um, uh, but for, yeah, for a good 15 years, basically, no, I didn't. Um, all the Nigerians that I would know and interact with were in diaspora. Um, and that was a challenge. You know, when I started the show, I wondered, yeah, is this going to... Are you connecting? Correct. Them? Well, not more, I believed in my ability to connect because I cared about the issues I was talking about. But would I, would they believe me? Would I be authentic? 
Yeah. Which brings me to the question, how is the show doing in Africa? Um, thankfully, has it, very been, well. has it been accepted? Yeah, when you look at the, the Facebook group page, for instance, and mm -hmm. the YouTube views, um, you can see all the analytics and you can see where the views and the likes are coming from. And the biggest fan base is Nigerian. So I have uh, 117,000 fans on Facebook now. And 30, 31, 32,000 are from Nigeria. And then it's Kenya. And then it's Uganda. And then it's diaspora. Then it's the United States and the UK. And then you come back to Africa, uh, Ghana, um, South Africa, and so on. And the same with YouTube. It reflects the same. Uh, and same now you know, it's talking to maybe Ebony Life, or it would be wonderful to, um, to be able to, to reach more uh, Nigerians and more Africans. OK, so in closing, what brings you to Nigeria this time? This particular occasion was to make some episodes uh, in connection with Social Media Week Lagos. Fantastic initiative, um, uh, promoting digital activism, digital entrepreneurship, and I decided to come back, do some interviews as my pastor character, Pastor Azwike. Amen! 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 <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so I did some interviews with Femi O.K., okay, who's this Al Jazeera yeah. Yeah. Nigerian British, with Jason Joku, the head of uh, Iroko um, uh, TV and Iroking, and uh, talked to some public, talked to the public about issues like uh, the same-sex marriage prohibition bill, the Child Not Bride campaign, life in Lagos, all of this stuff. So you are having fun? Oh, yeah. Amazing fun. Too much fun. Inkemna <laughs> Azuike. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Ah, so that's us for today. We'll bring you a fresh package next Saturday. I'm Alera Uji, wishing you all the best. And, uh, well, this is the last, we're going into the last week of February. So yes. enjoy it. Well, I wish you the same. And uh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's it, Kemna, waving again. My name is Kadi Akintami, and I guess you can't help but say a few words. Uh, one you don't want to say anything else. No, I've, I've taken that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's yeah, I just want to be polite. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, have a great weekend and God bless. See you next week.